Although right now, Charlie has curriculum that he is able to start working on. You might not necessarily want Charlie to move in a nonlinear progression through the different lessons. You might want Charlie to start at the first lesson, take careful notes, move on to possibly a second part of that lesson, taking careful notes, and then progress on to the quiz, enforcing a linear progression through his learning. Also, you might prefer for Charlie to take the quiz or test up to possibly just a maximum of three times. And at that point, if Charlie continues to struggle, for you to be notified to intervene. If that's the case, you'll want to assign Charlie and other students assignments that have been customized more for standards-based grading. In other words, they still allow for multiple attempts and they still allow you to intervene when you need to. To assign these assignments to a student, like Charlie, head up to the Assignment tab and click the Assignment Archive button. Think of the Assignment Archive as our own school district library of customized curriculum. To search this library known as the Assignment Archive, you're going to have to change some of your search parameters. And that's done by selecting the availability to My School. My Assignments is your personal library of customized courses that perhaps you created and don't necessarily want to share with others in the school. My School, where you can also save things that you create, is the place where everybody can share everybody's assignments that they create and we can all benefit from sharing that way. So select My School and keyword search for 10-11. Here you can see a list of customized curriculum all available in the Assignment Archive. Some of the curriculum has notations indicating when this particular archived course was aligned to our Quaker Town Community School District learning targets. To preview any one of these courses, you'll notice that as I mouse over, the names are, are active. So I'm going to click on and preview the History 5 Social Studies content. And when the course loads, you'll notice a few things. The first thing that you might notice are these little icons to the right. And you'll see that as I mouse over this particular icon picture, you'll see it says Next Activity and Cycle to Itself and Progress Alert. This is called a decision point. In other words, think of it as a little bit of extra artificial intelligence attached to all the quizzes. And as I scroll down, you can see even attached to the tests that communicate to the system an if-then statement. You can think back to how computers work a little bit. The if-then statement for our decision points reads basically like this. If a student scores below the mastery score, then allow an additional attempt. If a student scores above the mastery score, then allow the student to continue. The decision point allows for two additional cycles of the redo. So in other words, the initial attempt and then two retakes, allowing a total of three attempts at any one of these assessments. You also notice 
the little icon over here of one, two, three. And as I mouse over, you'll see the word sequential. That means that in this particular folder, Daily Olmec Life, Olmec Civilization, Art and Religion, these elements are progressed through by the student user in a sequential navigation. In other words, the student just can't jump to the quiz. The student must first go through the lesson. And in the case of a Part A and Part B type of lesson structure here, the student must go through this lesson, then that lesson, then they will be allowed to take the quiz. You'll see the decision points and the sequential navigation repeated throughout. You'll also see this here. This is a self-select navigation icon. In other words, for the chapters, such as U.S. politics, U.S. history, U.S. economy, this particular, these particular folders are self-select, meaning that once the student goes into, let's say, U.S. economy, they can then select whether they're going to the Charles Goodyear or the Elias Howe and the Samuel Morse and so on and so forth folders. However, once they enter those folders, then the sequential navigation will be enforced. Take a notice that some of the activities include additional resources for you, like a worksheet that you can print out, or a lesson plan that you can print out as well. So as you scan through, by all means, feel free to take advantage of those hard copy resources that you can either print out for your students or email them to them, email to them. This is the assignment that I wish to assign to Charlie, so I'm going to close this. And now I'm going to click the checkbox next to it. Once the checkbox is clicked, I'm going to click Assign to Students. And it will take me to the next view where I'll be able to search for Charlie. And right here, you can see that I can click right next to Charlie's name. When I hit Finish, The confirmation screen reads that I've assigned Social Studies 5 class Charlie Brown the History 5 Social Studies assignment. And I'll close this out. Now let's take a look at what this assignment looks like to Charlie. I'm over at Charlie's login screen and I'm going to log in as the student. Now take a look. The social studies icon has this additional word assignments underneath it. So that's your first clue that you've assigned an assignment from the archive correctly to the student. Let's click inside of this. When you get inside you'll notice that the icons are quite different too. They've now changed two folders. And you'll also see the name of the archive at the top. I'm going to click here to go into the first folder like we did earlier with the basal curriculum. And you'll see in this level, the landscape is a bit different too. It uses folders. Now remember, this level of folders, the student can still decide which area to go into. In fact, if you'd like them to try it, they can even enter the chapter test and try the chapter test to see if they can test out of this entire chapter. However, once they enter into a lesson level, you'll notice that my icon is live or active only on the first element in this folder. So therefore, the student must go through this level folder sequentially. Let's go back one. 
let's check out daily Olmec life. Again, sequential navigation is enforced. However, at the unit level or chapter level, you can see that Charlie would be able to select any one of these particular areas that they want. They don't have to go through the entire chapter sequentially. In fact, they can test out of the chapter if they wanted to right from the beginning. And that's how you can also verify that a student has the correct assignments. Now, be cautious. Every time you log in as a student, you have to be sure that student is not working in that account at that particular time, or you will inadvertently kick the student out of their work that they're in. So over time, you'll want to become more and more care comfortable with verifying that you've done the correct thing and assign the correct assignments from your teacher account so that you will no longer have to check in all of the individual student accounts. But more practice with the system, you'll become more comfortable with that as well.